I am the speed prince. Ça, c'est le chef du speed, la reine du speed, et <rire> toi, <rire> le joker du speed, et lui, le coach du speed. <rire> Find out all the technical secrets to help you skate more efficiently. Improve your crossovers. Learn the famous double push and also discover how to race in a pack. A little methodology. We invite you not only to enjoy the pretty pictures, but also to look at them carefully, focusing your attention on the finer points. Of course, we'll suggest several exercises designed to improve your technique and hopefully correct one or two bad habits. Are you ready? Hang on, we're out of here. What's the most important part in a sport like inline skating? Speed and the unique feeling it gives you. Oh yeah, you can find speed in all racing sports. Who's the winner? The one that covers the distance in the fastest time. Sometimes we forget this very obvious fact. Speed will be the thread that runs throughout this video. Where to begin? First we'll have to create speed, build it up, and continue to increase it by acceleration. And then, maintain it solo against the wind, in straightaways, in turns, or in a race pack sheltered from the wind. Don't forget that to go fast, and even faster, we have to become more efficient and economical. Everybody knows that human energy is not unlimited. Thrill yourself and take the most possible pleasure in new sensations. For those of us who live with skates on our feet, the first thing we all believe in is that skates are an extension of our bodies. Contrary to a bicycle or even a windsurf board, we're not on something. The skates are at the end of our legs. Consequently, they must be one with our bodies. Once you have acquired this belief, your approach to technique will change considerably. At the start of your workout, check that the skate is on correctly. See that you can move from edge to edge. Feel the length of the frame. Used wheels slow down your technical progression because they reduce your ability to control your edges. And furthermore, they make your wheels slide out because of bad traction. In all my trips to races, everybody always asks me stuff like, can you show me how to cross over? Or could you please explain the double push to me? Sharing this passion with people is really great, and teaching them how to skate and see them improve week after week is a real pleasure. The long distance racing position. This is a position that we must be able to maintain as long as possible. A position that's relaxed and economical because wasted energy costs a lot of energy. But how can we find the skating position? Let's proceed with a body adjustment to easily achieve the skating position called the seated position. Let's just use the pre-existing measurements already in our possession. The length of our arms and legs. Hands on thighs, 
bend the legs until the hands reach the knees. By flexing the ankles, try to find the vertical alignment of three points, the shoulders, the knees, and the toes. Remember this position and recall it every time on your way to becoming a speed skater. You are now in the basic skating position, stable and comfortable. I suggest that you obtain the same position with another exercise by introducing the push. Bring the legs together, weight only on one leg. Extend the other leg laterally as far as possible until only the toe wheel of the extended skate is touching the ground. Keep the weight on only the support leg. Flex it until the pushing skate has all its wheels on the ground. The hands are at knee level. You are still in the long distance racing position, stable, comfortable, but also pushing efficiently with all your wheels. If you lose this seated position, even by an angle of only a few degrees, you will immediately notice that it becomes impossible to push with the totality of your wheels on the ground. To achieve the position for sprinting or accelerating, we shall proceed in the same way as the first exercise, but this time bending at the arms. Our relative measurements are now much shorter. The seated position is therefore far more exaggerated. You are now in an optimal skating position for reaching top speed, along with great stability and the chance to develop maximum power. Okay, speed, speed skating, skating for me represents total freedom and that's why we all love the sport and want to show you in this video how it all fits together. So put on your skates and let's go for it! The classic skating stroke is composed of three successive phases. The push, which is the propulsion phase, the foot circle and the landing of the skate, which is the repositioning phase for the support leg. And finally, the gliding phase on one skate only. The secret of a good stroke is very simple. Transfer your body weight from one leg to the other and get good propulsion. The body weight is never balanced equally on two skates, but supported by one skate alone. Each leg alternately becomes the support leg, solid and stable. Then it becomes the pushing leg, efficient for creating strong propulsion. You can observe that the foot circle that appears at first to be a transitional motion in the stroke now becomes an integral movement. Carried out successfully, it allows for better repositioning of the body on the support leg. The stability gained is hugely important for a supple stroke, flowing with no bumpy movements. Train yourself to do a complete circle with your foot, bringing it back around to point in the direction of travel before the skate touches the ground. Bring it closer and closer. You can even make the sides of the shoes or frames touch one another. This enables you to register the movement and adjust it correctly. I've always found someone to help me improve when it came to speed and to technique. I've always had someone at my side to assist me. This is a good time to cash in and to give to others what I've learned during all these years.
We're now going to observe the push phase. Ah, uh, yes, it's the motor for your skating stroke. It's the push that's the key element in determining the speed of the skater. With a good seated position, we'll look to accomplish complete extension of the leg with movement which is both relaxed and powerful. The push is directed into the ground and it's the reaction force sent back by the ground that propels the skater forward. Now, let's join Pascal for an introduction to the power box, the notion of the boundaries of an effective push. The power box is a zone around the body in which the skates can affect a push with maximum power. In practice, as with in scientific tests, we observe that the moment of maximum pushing power is situated near the center of the power box where all the wheels are gripping the ground. The faster you go, the more you have to push laterally. Here's a simple exercise to improve your lateral push. Leaning on the inside leg, trace a circle and propel yourself forward with the outside skate using short, abrupt, strong pushes. Continue in a straight line using the same push, as much to the side as possible. This exercise must be carried out both to the left and to the right. Let's take a look at another possible exercise. Maintain both skates on the ground and accelerate using short, strong and precise pushes. Try to push with the back wheel of the skate to ensure that the push is effectively carried out with all the wheels. And again, concentrate on feeling the propulsion, the energy return, and the speed you've gained as a result. position, but how can you remain effective and especially economical when you're skating solo or at the front of a pack of racers? You can integrate falling body weight into your pushing stroke. It's an aid to propulsion, or at least an energy-saving way of maintaining speed. First of all, when the skate recovers after the end of the push, delay setting the skate down and let the body fall onto the new support leg. In a way, this movement will pull your body forwards. Body weight becomes a power element in the skating stroke. Secondly, there's another form of effortless propulsion that is well known to long distance racers and solo specialists. It concerns a movement onto the outside edge of the skates with the entire body weight falling outside your support axis. I know, this appears a little complicated and not always easy to do, but after a little practice, you'll acquire flowing and energy-saving skating. almost forgot the arms. In the skating stroke, especially during acceleration or sprinting, the arms play a dynamic role. They contribute to stability and are a good help for the efficiency of propulsion. The movement should be smooth and strong at the same time. The swinging arm movement should not pull you sideways towards the ground or upwards. Imagine that the arm swing points you in the forward direction. Over long distances, we'll choose to assume an aerodynamic position in which the arms are placed on the back. This position must be maintained in a relaxed fashion. Speed, I live for speed, I'm addicted to speed, I have to race, it, it, it's my fix. 
and the first time I saw skates was in Holland, and I saw a pack of skaters coming screaming around the corner. I said, that's for me. I've got to have a pair of those skates. And uh, it takes time, though. It takes a lot of practice. And this video is exactly what you need to help you improve your technique. It's going to enhance your enjoyment of the sport of inline skating. As in the straights, the position for the turn must likewise be stable. In fact, even more stable as an additional force intervenes, the famous centrifugal force, which pushes you to the outside of the turn. <laughs> As a reaction, the body leans toward the inside of the corner to counter this force. The alignment of the three points must remain identical. Without using crossovers, body weight is evenly distributed between the two skates. Take more and more angle and test the limits of wheel grip on the skating surface. Make sure that your skates are in line with the angle of your body. The stable seated position will help you. We've always wanted to maintain speed. Therefore, as soon as the radius of the turn allows, we can maintain propulsion by using crossovers. Let's take a look. As soon as you start to turn, push strongly on the right leg, and depending on your speed, take more or less angle. Your weight now moves onto your left leg. We're looking to load the support leg. For a beginner, getting help from another skater is welcome. He'll increase the push on the knee and make you feel the lean and the grip of all the wheels on the ground. The right leg is now free to cross over. Look for the most lateral push possible in direct opposition to the centrifugal force. Try to ensure that the body remains constantly perpendicular to the radius of the corner. If the body twists, the position is no longer maintained and the push is accomplished only on the toe wheel, not on all the wheels. Here's a good reference point. Make sure that the hand on the inside of the turn remains in line with the knee. In turns, as with on straightaways, the arms play a very important role, stabilizing the body and in the dynamic of movement. Are there two of you? You want to practice crossovers? Then here's an exercise especially for you. This exercise will enable you to improve the angle and push during crossovers, reinsuring beginners at the same time. The skater on the outside will play the role of the centrifugal force. He accompanies the other skater, skating at the same speed and staying perpendicular to her. Appreciate the maximum angle you can take until reaching the limits of wheel grip in complete safety. Let's move on to another type of crossover training around a circle, this time on your own. You're now looking to perfect your motion, adjusting foot movement minutely, brushing the frame as you go. Thrilling, huh? Once you've experienced the sensation of extreme speed in the turn, you won't be able to go without it.
Inline skating has something in it for everybody, especially speed skating. You can choose how fast you want to go and how far you want to go. Nowadays, with so much sitting around the office in front of the computer, it's really important to do something to strengthen your body. Skating works your whole body, your back, your stomach, your glutes, and it sure beats going to a sweaty aerobics studio. Remember the thread of our story? Speed. The double push technique answers the desire to maintain speed, to never cut the engine. In short, it's a form of continuous propulsion. The double push skating technique is principally used over long distances, but also during accelerations or in long, powerful sprints. But where can we find continuous propulsion on each support leg? In turns? Why yes, crossovers are also a form of double push. The first push consists of a classic straightaway stroke a lateral push on the inside edge of the skate. Then the skater follows through with a rolling phase on the other foot and a push on the outside edge like in the corners. The foot used for the first push comes back to position itself underneath the body and the cycle of the double push starts again. Let's take a little closer look at the fundamental elements required to succeed at the double push. Near the end of the first push, the second push begins on the other leg. There's a very short moment when both pushes are simultaneous, one on the inside edge of one skate and the other on the outside edge of the other skate. This sequence of pushes will enable a supple and flowing movement and will help you achieve enough outside edge to be able to perform the second push. The return of the foot enables the skate to be repositioned in the direction of travel. The skate lands underneath the hip. One last important point. The pushing angle on the inside edge of the skate stays almost identical to the pushing angle on the outside edge. This small detail enables one to truly identify a real second push and therefore an awesome double push. Without good positioning and a good first push, we stand a great chance of only seeing a simple leg pull or passage onto the outside edge instead of what should be a strong propelling second push. Also, due to the angle required to achieve the second push on the outside edge, the double push is only possible at a relatively high speed. To stop this from happening, there we are, that's much better like that. You know how to do crossovers? Yes. So then you can learn how to do the double push too. I propose acquiring the necessary technical ingredients with five exercises. You're already familiar with the first exercise. It concerns the lateral push around a circle on the inside edge. This exercise should be carried out in both directions. The second exercise will help you to improve the second push. Start by tracing a small circle towards the left with your weight on the right leg only. With a single push from the left leg on the outside edge of the skate, make a scissoring movement to propel yourself forward. Watch out! Don't pull on the ground, but push using the body angle obtained by leaning to the inside of the circle. Look to reduce the size of the circle, and if necessary, increase your speed by taking one or two crossovers. The centrifugal force will increase, enabling you to lean more and grab the right angle for a good push. Be careful not to twist the body. This way, you'll get the most lateral push possible, not one that slides out towards the back. The third exercise combines the first two. Trace a circle, alternating the push on the inside edge and the push on the outside edge. One, two, 
One, two. Of course, this exercise must also be carried out in both directions. You may then accelerate with stronger and stronger pushes and leave the circle while continuing to propel yourself forward on the outside and inside edges. In principle, you now possess the two pushes necessary for the double push. In the fourth exercise, you'll combine them to perform a slalom movement in a straight line. Take a firm seated position, skates together and perfectly parallel. Propel yourself forward, pushing simultaneously on both skates. Try to minimize lateral body movement in order to trace the straightest path possible. Feel the propulsion from the two pushes and the resulting speed. Here's a tip. Help yourself by pushing with your hands on your knees, particularly on the knee whose skate pushes on the outside edge. The last exercise is a continuation of the previous one. It must only be carried out once both pushes have been mastered. The idea of this exercise is to ensure stability on the leg, pushing on the outside edge. At the end of the two simultaneous pushes, transfer your body weight onto only one skate, the one that's pushing on the outside edge. This produces a sort of crisscross movement of the outside foot. You're moving in a straight line, but as in a corner, the outside leg is free and progressively traces a circle behind the body to reposition itself under the hip. Once linked together naturally, this movement becomes a double pushing skating stroke. sharing with them our passion for skating, seeing five or six thousand skaters at the start of a marathon, that's what's totally cool. And seeing all the people who take pleasure in participating in a race, everybody skates at their own level. Speed, ah yes, always speed. You have babied it with dedicated practice by yourself. Now what remains is to maintain that speed in the shelter of a racing pack. For security's sake, the first important element is to learn and perfect your pack technique with a calm and studious group, whose level allows for a regular and steady skating style. In order for the skaters to be in unison, the rear skater must have as much information as possible. When skating very close together, it becomes impossible to see the skates of the person in front. Other visual bearings such as shoulder and arm movements can be taken into account and used to adapt one's pace to that of the skater in front. The sound that skates make is also an important piece of information. Further information about the stroke cadence can be obtained by touching the back of the skater in front. The amount of arm flexion is tactile information which determines the distance between two skaters. This situation can be compared to that of learning how to dribble a basketball. The player has to take his eye off the ball in order to watch his teammates and improve his game. In a turn, the only way to remain very close and in sync is to adjust your pace according to the crossover steps of the skater in front. Entering the turn, move over slightly to the left during the first crossover stroke. Practice this positioning. Follow another skater doing crossovers, moving closer and closer to him. Train yourself to take into account all necessary visual and tactile elements. Pas dans la ligne droite, 
when a skater knows how to skate in sync with the group, he will be able to circulate easily in a racing pack situation. A key element to fall into the same rhythm as the other skaters is a quick and precise entrance into the pack. The idea is not to take the place in front of a skater, but the place behind the skater that's in front of him. This action has to be accomplished with a surge of speed. There's more opportunity this way of entering a group successfully without touching the skater whose place you are taking. For example, to enter a racing pack from the left hand side, aim for the skater's right shoulder and take up his stroke as quickly as possible. The delicate part is entering the stroke. This should be done as soon as the stroke opens and it becomes possible to enter a skate without danger and insert oneself without interruption into the skating flow. The following exercises to perfect this technique will simulate the different racing situations where it's possible to change position in the pack. Like on the track, the last skater will move up into the second spot. Then the leading skater drifts back into second place. They're so close together, it's said that he slides over the skater behind him in order to pick up his stroking immediately afterwards. Then all the skaters will work on their technique to enter the pack and then to take their turn at the front. When a team is looking to regroup itself, the ability to ride at the heart of a racing pack is strategically important. A racer will place himself strategically and then let his teammates in by opening and closing the door. All this jockeying for position within the pack adds excitement to the race. If it's widely recognized that there are ideal techniques and specific skating movements which yield optimum efficiency and maximal speed, then it's necessary also to point out that everybody has their own way of skating. Each skater has his own signature style and potential for speed that's based on his own personal physical capacities. To complete your technical preparation, you can make up training sequences to perfect your skating skills such as agility. The richer and more varied your range of technical skills, the better your response will be to any kind of racing situation. Before each training session, don't forget that a good warm-up with a progressive increase in effort is very beneficial. The same applies to stretching sessions, which prevent muscle pull. It will enable greater range of movement. Flexible muscles will also help you achieve technical movements with greater ease. Strengthening exercises specific to skating are also particularly applicable for completing your preparation. Well-balanced physical conditioning is a big part of a successful program. Mix up your training by alternating long distance sessions with periods of resistance and interval training. Because in a race, 
there are a lot of changes of pace. <laughs> Diet also plays an important role in sports preparation. Fill up depending on your different needs and level of exertion. The dynamic camaraderie of training in a group or with a club is important to help you skate with the same enthusiasm all year round. And what a pleasure to share the joy and emotion of sports. It's also possible to improve rapidly at a training camp or a skating workshop. A lot of time is dedicated to specific techniques which provide shortcuts for accelerated learning. You now have everything in hand to progress and to experience new speed sensations. Feel the pleasure of skating and give it all you've got. So now it's your turn to play. Speed is for you. Bon, allez, on y va.